Hello and welcome to an installment of Mantis Hacks. Uh, sorry it's been a little while since my last video. Uh, I was actually really busy over the summer with work and I was away a lot. Um, uh, and actually this particular installment isn't going to be a follow-up on the gripper. I will go back to that at some point. Um, but I also hinted that I was starting a giant Lego project. Uh, so let's take a look at that. So having seen James Bruton's uh, technical Lego scaling up prints on his YouTube channel, uh, I thought it'd be fun to do something myself. And having always been a fan of technical Lego, as you can probably see, still am, and uh, probably what got me into engineering as well, uh, I thought it'd be a great thing to try and scale up something uh, like an original technical Lego kit. Now, there was a couple of aspects that um, would decide what kind of kit I could do. Uh, and one of the things is that I wanted, ideally, uh, to be able to scale up something big enough that my uh, nephew, who's eight years old, could actually sit in, for example. Um, I quickly ruled that out when I realised how big it would need to be, and also how much uh, plastic and print time it would take. Anyway, I basically um, decided that with my printer, which was a Lulzbot TAS 5, I had to try and print all the parts as one piece if I could, rather than trying to join them together. So I was looking at kits online and I came across uh, this particular kit, which didn't look too big. Uh, none of the parts looked particularly massive either. And I thought I could just about manage this. Um, so this was the kit I picked. It's kit 1972, I think it was about, this has got 1985 written on it, it's somewhere in the uh, mid 80s. Uh, and it was a go-kart and I thought, you know, if, if I could scale it up big enough for my nephew to sit in it would be hilarious, but obviously I, I couldn't quite get there. Um, so what I did was basically look at this, this was 98 pieces, it's still a lot of bits to print. Uh, and I thought, well, what's the largest part I'd have to fit on my bed? And that's basically what determined the scale I was gonna print at. And that scale turned out to be five times larger. And to show you what that looks like, uh, here is the uh, Lego go-kart go wheel. And here it is five times larger. So you can see there's quite a significant difference there. And uh, it was going to be a lot of fun regardless of whether my nephew could sit in it or not. So now you know what I've been printing. Let's, uh, let's first take a look at the original kit. There it is, the 1972 Lego kit. A little uh, steering at the front there and the double wheels very cute little go-kart now let's have a look at what it looks like at five times scale bosh there you go look at that steering works You've got ninja flex rubber tires printed there on the uh, on the taz 5 this is all printed on one printer on the uh, lulzbot taz 5 and uh yeah it's quite a beast so let's uh Let's take a little closer look there, and uh, I'll start taking it apart and show you how I uh, how I printed this. Right, now that's dismantled, let's uh, take a look at some of these parts. So, I'm gonna start with um, the part that determined the size of uh, the scale that I could use. And that was this bit here. Uh, now the reason for that is, uh, basically I've gone diagonally, I've printed this diagonally across my bed, so the bed would have been square like that. Um, and that's right to the edges of the bed. Um, so this was the largest part. Now I probably could have printed it on its side, but I wanted to try and keep all of the uh, pips so that they were printed flat, so they're nice and round. Um, so this was the bit that determined the five times scale. Uh, now, obviously all of this is printed in ABS, uh, and I like working with ABS because of its, um, it's just great stuff to work with when you can bond it again with acetone and what have you and glue it back together and repair it. Uh, it's just my material of choice. Uh, but obviously with ABS you do get warp uh, issues and particularly on long flat parts like this um, what I was having issues were, uh, with was um, the part would tend to want to peel away from the bed in the corners so you do the first few layers and then this is all bridged 
so there's no support material in this it's all bridging from my underside there uh, again for speed reasons I didn't want it I was trying to do as much as I could without any bridging um, but then what would happen when the bridge layer would go down and then the next couple of solid layers on top of that it would try to pull the whole part up off the bed uh, so I was having to use quite big brims to try and hold it down and this one in fact the brim uh, would actually kind of go over the edge of the bed because it was just about big enough to get on my bed um, and that took a little while to get this one out uh, the other tricky part so so these ones the uh, the big technical bricks um, I should say that all of these parts are pretty much 20% infill and I'll say if they're not uh, otherwise but most of them are 20% infill and I think nearly all of them are um, two perimeter layers only just again for speed uh, and I printed all of this stuff at 0.4 layer height again for speed and it's on uh, my, my Lulzbot TAS5 which has a 0.5 mil nozzle. If you get up close they're fairly rough to look at I mean in the insides again there's, this is all bridged there's no support material for speed uh, if you do get up on the inside you can start to see some of the uh, the bridging material had collapsed on the on the, the back side of these holes but basically I just cleaned them up with a knife afterwards to round them out um, so a little bit of clean up required and taking the um, the uh, the brim off and what have you and just um, I just run a, a knife carefully down the edge to deburr them um, but again this this part was a tricky one it would tend to want to peel on the edge of the bed and here's one actually that that did peel so you can see on this corner here how it's pulled off up the edge of the bed and in fact my bed needed replacing the PEI sheet had um, got a lot of bubbles underneath it and what have you so I did replace my bed and that kind of fixed this problem uh, and these stuck so well it was quite tricky to get them off of the bed afterwards actually um, but they turned out pretty good and that part just an example that's about a two and a half three hour print I think from recollection um, one of the larger pieces um, the other tricky part was the the large um, flat plate so that's the sort of the biggest part if you like although it will fit on the bed quite comfortably uh, it was tricky just because it again it has lots of um, uh, a massive layer of, of, of infill at the back end so that's all bridged in the inside there no support material uh, and it did want to warp off the bed and you can see in order to get this down I put a massive brim on it about 10 or 15 millimeter brim but then once the brim was set and the, the printer had gone up a few layers I actually put crocodile clips on the bed on the edge of the brim to try and hold it down which did work apart from one corner that I couldn't get to which was this corner um, because the crocodile clip was going to interfere with the machine uh, and that's the one corner that did peel a little bit but to be honest it came out good enough then I was happy with it and uh, so I moved on. For, um, these parts I did have to do with some support material uh, and I have some examples of that printing um, and this also uh, had a bit of a disaster with these because I did a massive overnight print and I had lots of these laid out on the bed. Uh, obviously there was support material underneath here coming off of the bed they were printed this way up um, and about I don't know how many hours I think it was about eight nine maybe ten hours into the print we were about here uh, maybe a little it was about there I can see the line actually and we had a power cut at work so the printer died and uh, I was really loath to start this again so I thought how can I start this print off um, and I basically what I did is I measured how high up the print had got which was like 30 something millimeters I then went back into the slicer and got rid of that 30 millimeters and then on my Taz I fooled it into thinking the bed was that much higher by putting a 30 millimeter standoff on my Z calibration axis uh, and just kind of prayed and kind of it came down and calibrated at the 37 mil and started printing again and these have actually two parts they joined back together you can just about make out the line there and so I managed to save the uh, 10 or 11 hours of print I've already done and on lots of these parts all stacked up uh, so I was quite pleased with those um, the only mistake I made on this one I checked all the tolerances of stuff as I was going along making sure like fits were fairly good with things um, but what I missed on this and you'll see on the kit actually that they, they were too loose for this fit here um, so there's a part of the kit where these slot into and I've had to what I've done rather I didn't really want to glue them because I didn't want the kit to be uh, um, you know so I couldn't take it apart again so actually I've got some paper that um, just sits in between the two parts and it just makes that a little bit bigger and fits the tolerance nicer. 
So these parts here, for example, again, to save time, what I've done, um, rather than uh, do any fancy bridging or anything, I've actually printed this in two parts. It's down the middle there. So that, that would have been that way up on the printer and that would have been that way up on the printer. And what I did is I put some alignment holes in the CAD drawings that would take screw fittings. If you look down in there, you can just about make out there are some screws in the bottom there. So it's screwed and glued together once they've been printed. So it's printed in two bits, which made it simpler. Uh, similarly for things like the steering wheel, printed in two bits, so there's no overhang to deal with, and then glued back together. And the, when, when I glued them, basically I would align it on, a, on an axle and then G-clamp it and glue it with acetone. Um, similarly for the cog, is in two bits, you can see down the middle there. So again, I don't have to worry about uh, printing support material and uh, get a nicer finish. The little hinge piece, that was actually printed in one, two, three, four, five, six pieces. Um, so basically it's this bottom part and this top plate here and then the pins on the side. Again, I've done the same technique. I've just put a screw through so there's a hole on the CAD that aligns the two parts up and the same on the top pips as a screw and they're screwed and glued on. Um, I took, could take the screws out, I suppose, now they're glued, but I've left them in there just to give it a bit more um, resilience. I mean, I spent a lot of time getting the fit right on parts, you know, just... Uh, so basically, I found some CAD files online. Uh, there's quite a lot of it on, like, GrabCAD and places like that. But I also found James Bruton had some links to um, some SCAD files, which are like a mathematical CAD. Um, so you can literally um, type in what size you want, like a two by three piece and the CAD will generate for you. Uh, but the problem was I found that there was errors in the SCAD files that um, James had been using and they, the scales weren't quite right, so it wasn't always fitting with other parts. So I made my own adjustments to them and played around for a while until you get nice kind of tolerance fits on things and stuff goes together well. So it took a little bit of fiddling around to get stuff like that to fit nicely. And Again, the steering arms, steering pivots, these were printed in uh, two parts. Um, so basically that was printed upwards from the printer in one piece and then again, screwed and glued the top pip on just to uh, make it simple to print. The axles, I was amazed how well these printed. Um, so I, I've never printed anything this tall on my, on my TAS 5 before. And I just thought, I thought, well, maybe it'll work. I'll give it a go. And it's kind of, you can see it's got radiuses on uh, on both ends of the axle there. So it starts off, it was printed this end first, there we go. And it literally just printed straight up and it's very straight and true. It was incredible how well these came out. Um, so I did up to a size six axle, straight up on the Z axis. Uh, the only one I had to do differently was the eight axle. That's the one I couldn't fit on the machine. I could have printed it sideways, a bit like I did this one, I suppose. Um, but I kind of wanted to keep it again so that it's nice and round and true. So what I did with this is I printed it in two halves. You can see the join there. Uh, and so I left that part flat on the printer, slightly different CAD work. And what I've done, if you take a look at this picture I'll put up, um, basically, there's a hollow tube down the middle and then I put, because it was long and I wanted it to be strong, um, I put a um, uh, like a five mil uh, studded bar straight down the middle and then two pins that align the two axles together that go in one half and then as you push them together it keeps those perfectly in line. Uh, the only difference on these, again most of this was 20% infill apart from these which I think I did 50% infill just to make them stronger. Good. The only part that isn't 3D printed is the little hose that sits at the back. Um, and what I found for this, um, I did think about printing some Ninja Flex, but decided it would probably be pretty tricky. Um, and I found this. Uh, this is like neoprene, so it's you know, soft um, foam rubber. Uh, so all I did with that is um, I just called out one end so that it would sit over the little uh, little uh, gun piece that sits on the back of the engine. Uh, and the other end just disappears into the Technic brick and this happens to be about the right size. It's a little bit big scale wise. It should be a little bit smaller in diameter. Um, and uh, actually coring out the end was really easy. I very carefully uh, put it into one of these to hold it in one place. 
and I actually just drilled this out with a 15 mil drill bit and um, I'm a very slow setting and it's amazing it just kind of drilled it rather than churn it up and pull it through which we were expecting and finally the wheels uh, and this has got to be one of the most satisfying things uh, to print and put together uh, so the wheel hub itself was uh, like the other parts printed in two halves and then using an axle to align the two parts glued together fairly simple 20% infill again uh, but the Ninja Flex tyres were just uh, a dream, really. Uh, I'd never printed in Ninja Flex before, so this was a kind of a new uh, test for me. Um, uh, basically, uh, it's quite a slow process, so this took about seven hours to print. Um, and also on the PEI bed, you have to put down um, like a glue stick layer first, otherwise it will stick too well. Uh, so that's like a Yoohoo stick or a Pritt stick kind of thing. Uh, and it's water-based solvent, so it's really easy to clean off afterwards. And um, yeah, basically, again, no infill on. Uh, sorry, 20% um, infill on this. Uh, no support material. Uh, I tried to make it so that there's like a you know, like a lip in the inside that ramps in. Uh, that's why there's a couple of strands hanging off where it's uh, literally tried to bridge over air in places. Um, sort of bridging in between there, so none of that was uh, support material, just straight bridging. Um, yeah, and really satisfying to get this off of the uh, off the printer and um, put the two parts together like that. Beautiful. So there it is, back together in one piece. Um, so let's just talk about how long it took and how much it cost to print. So the build took about 168 hours, which is uh, seven days. Um, but that's not factoring into uh, all the mistakes that I made and the parts that I printed that uh, failed. Um, and just getting all the tolerances to fit nicely and what have you. So you could probably add another three days of print time onto that all in. Uh, now if you look at um, the weight of this, so the original kit weighs 80 grams. Uh, so if I literally just scaled that up, so it's a five times scale. So we take the, uh, the cube of five, so five times five, five times five is 125 times the mass. Um, so 125 times 80 grams, it should be coming out at 10 kilograms. Uh, well, currently this weighs in at 5.1 kilos. Uh, and that's obviously because this isn't solid parts. These are um, about 20% infill and what have you. Uh, so it's still a pretty hefty lump um, at 5.1 kilos. And uh, that works out, I estimated in material cost, uh, I get all my material from uh, 3D Filiprint. This is all ABS, they're standard ABS. And I think that cost me between 80 and 100 pounds in filament. Um, so not too bad really for what you get out of it at the end. So I do hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, I've really enjoyed this build. Being a fan of Lego and 3D printing, what could be better than this? Uh, where do I go from here? I don't know, maybe scaling up a bit further or trying a bigger kit, I'm not quite sure yet. Anyway, uh, if you've liked it, please do share and don't forget to check out uh, the Instagram and Twitter feed, which is Mantis Robot. See you again soon.